Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're diving into a common challenge faced by many developers. Our viewer asks about handling exceptions in Redux, specifically with Redux Thunk and Dispatch results. They have a basic Thunk action creator and reducer adapted from the Redux documentation, and they're encountering an issue where component level errors are being swallowed by the fetch promises catch block. Welcome back to another technical video. Today we'll be going through your question, answering it, and hopefully finding that solution that you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy like me, and hopefully you find that resolution you need. Anyway, let's continue on. Let's begin by understanding the issue at hand. We have a thunk action creator that fetches posts and dispatches actions based on the result. In our action creator, we dispatch a request action, then fetch data from an API. If successful, we dispatch a success action. If there's an error, we catch it and dispatch a failure action. However, when the component tries to access a property that doesn't exist, it throws an error. This error is caught by the fetch promises catch block, which dispatches a failure action. To separate these errors, we can introduce a mechanism to distinguish between fetch errors and component errors. One approach is to use a dedicated error state in the Redux store. By implementing this pattern, we can ensure that only actual fetch errors result in a fetch post's failure action, while component errors can be handled separately. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To handle exceptions in Redux Thunk, consider moving your error handler into the previous then block. This can help catch errors more effectively. Here's a simple demonstration. First, we have a fetch function that resolves after a short delay. Then we simulate an error with fetch error. In the first example, an error is thrown in the then block and it's caught in the catch block. In the second example, the error handler is not triggered. With fetch error, we see that the error is caught in the first catch block, but in the second example, the error handler is also not triggered. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. In this code, we have a fetch wrapper that handles API responses. It checks for errors using the check status function, which looks for non-2xx responses. If an error occurs, the response is parsed using parse response, which handles different content types like JSON and HTML. Finally, the execute request function uses fetch to make the API call, chaining the check status and parse response functions to manage the response and errors. And that's it guys. We've gone through, answered your questions, and hopefully found that solution that you're looking for. If we did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And until the next time you need technical help, I hope you have a good one.
Oh, <laughs> 